Um, hello, good morning, class. So today we're going to have a special lecture on basically introduction to astronomy. But this is not like a typical theoretical lecture. It will be a lighter lecture. And I'm going to use a, a slide, which is a compilation of pictures, which was sent to me via email. And it was a long time ago that I didn't know the original source already. I think I was still in college during this time that was sent to me via email. So I kept this uh, slides of pictures because it's like a very good uh, presentation to, uh, to discuss little bits or parts of astronomy by picture. So, okay, so I hope you will learn something and enjoy a bit of this presentation. So this is not my, my PowerPoint. I will be using uh, this one for you guys. Okay, so I hope you can see my, wait. So wait, share. Stop share. Okay. So, yeah. So thinking outside the box and putting things in perspective might help. Here's a little astronomy to help you put this into perspective. This is the Hubble Space uh, Telescope. It is considered as the largest uh, telescope in outer space. And uh, the Hubble Space Telescope is located outside our atmosphere and is orbiting around the planet Earth at 593 kilometers above sea level and with an orbital period of about uh, one and a half hours or more at a speed of 28,000 kilometers per hour. So its name is in honor of Edwin Hubble and it was placed in 1990. It weighs about 11,000 kilograms with a 13.2 meter length and diameter 4.2 meter. The telescope can obtain images at a cost with a very high resolution and it can take images 0.1 arc second of re resolution. So talagang siya yung pinaka, isa sa pinaka powerful na telescope and it's located outside the, outside the planet so wala tayong dust or uh, artifacts na makikita masyado because yun yan, nasa labas siya. Walang clouds, walang light pollution, walang uh, dis disturbance also for the electronics part. Okay? This is the International Space Station. So imagine that the main part here is like uh, a bus. So para siyang kasing laki lang ng bus. Now, the rest are the, the, the electronics parts, the power source, and uh, you have here the, the, what they call this, the solar panels for their energy. And the middle part is where they work. Doon, nandun, pa, kasing laki lang siya ng bus, so napakaliit lang talaga niya, ng International Space Station. Okay, so it's also in outer space. So this is the view from inside the International Space Station. So my own view deck there, where you can see the a picture or the view of our planet. The next few slides or pictures are the best uh, pictures taken by Hubble, Hubble Space Telescope. This is the Sombrero Galaxy, also known also called M104 in Meister's catalog. At a distance of 28 million light years, it is considered one of the best pictures Hubble took. So yeah, Hubble, uh, sombrero, because it shapes like a sombrero. <laughs> okay, so yung mga naming nila, M104 is, it's a naming because there's a lot millions, trillions of stars and astronomical bodies. So they have to come up with a catalog 
a naming with letters, with numbers, kasi sobrang dami. But usually, kung sino naka-discover, or maybe sino naka-discover, siya yung nagpa, nagbibigay ng common names, like this one, shapes like a sombrero, so maybe a Spanish astronomer discovered it, so he called it, or she called it, sombrero, sombrero galaxy, because of its uh, feature. Next, we have here the Ant Nebula, so-called because of its shape, and it's located 3,000 and 6,000 light years away. So a nebula is basically a cloud of dust and particles, okay? So lahat na nakikita nyo rito na, na clouds, na, ito, nebula, so these are dust or particles. And of course, when hit by light, they will reflect and they will reach our eyes or our telescope. So guess what? It shapes like a, an ant. <laughs> Here is the Schemo Nebula at 5,000 light years away. Schemo, I don't know. Why Schemo? Maybe shapes like a Schemo. I don't know. Wala ako makita yung Schemo. Wow, this one is the Cat's Eye Nebula. It shapes like a Cat's Eye. Beautiful cat's eye. And yan yung kanyang mga dust and particles. So very unique din yung colors. So the colors tells us about the, the elements that are present, the substance or the particles that are present in that point in outer space. Next, the fifth place, uh, in the fifth place, the R glass nebula located 8,000 light years as a result of an exploding star. Beyond. So mukha siyang R glass. <laughs> In the sixth place, we have a part of the cone nebula at 2.5 light. Oh, malapit lang siya, class. Baka pwedeng bisitahin. <laughs> but we're talking about 2.5 light years. So it means, ano siya, uh, it took two and a half years before the image, before the light can reach our, our telescope. So uh, it looks delicious, like an ice cream. <laughs> Cone Nebula. In the seventh position, we find a portion of the Swan Nebula located 5,500 light years, described as an ocean of hydrogen, so marami siyang hydrogen, with small quantities of oxygen, sulfur, and other elements. So ayan, parang siyang may rainbow din siya. Next, wow. In the eighth, eighth place, this beautiful image called Star, starry, starry night. Oh, napapakanta tali ako. Starry night. And also known as light echo. Cool. Ayan. So maybe the, the, it has some reflections of light and it produces more bright light. That's why it's called light, light echo. I don't know. Next, there's so much things that we don't know in outer space in astronomy. So, you know, that's why it's very interesting. <laughs> It, it uh, makes us curious and want to know more about outside our planet. In the ninth place, two galaxies merging, NGC 2207 and IC 2163, located 114 million light years away. Oh my God, my forever. And uh, I don't think we can, we can reach this part in space because it's 114 million light years. Even if we, we travel, at the speed of light, hindi pa rin natin siya mara mararating within the 100 uh, years na ano. Ay, it's too far away. But they are merging. Okay? So maybe now they're already merged. Maybe because this is already 114 million years ago. So baka ngayon mas malapit na. It depends on the circulation or the movement of these uh, uh, galaxies. Take note, we're talking about galaxy. Our, our, our galaxy's Milky Way is just one average galaxy. And we are also merging with Andromeda galaxy, the closest galaxy. Next, the 10th place, a fragment of the Trifid Nebula with many stars at 9,000 light years. Okay, medyo malapit-lapit na. So ayan, yan din yung kanyang colors, iba-ibang elements din yan class. And other images, uh, images taken by Hubble later. Uh, this one plus is the Voyager 1. So the purpose is to voyage, okay? So Voyager 1 was released uh, by NASA or, you know, uh, launched by NASA in September 1977. So the purpose of this Voyager is to 
voyage <laughs> is to actually is to go beyond the solar system but along the way uh ang isa sa mga mission niya is to take pictures of of planets that that it it, it will came close to and uh so para lang siyang so 1977 yung technology technology nito class is similar lang sa technology ng lumang cellphone yung mga 3355 cellphone dati hindi pa smartphone so uh, imagine mo yung cellphone tinapon sa outer space so and it takes pictures kung may malapit na astronomical body planets moons so ganun lang ka low technology but now mas advanced pa yung mga smartphones niyo so ganun ka ano yung technology kabilis mag transform o mag mag advance so yun si Voyager nandito na siya ngayon it's about 102 astronomical unit away from us one astronomical unit is uh, is the distance from the sun and earth so imagine Voyager 1 is already 102 times the distance between sun and earth 102 astronomical unit so nandiyan na yung actual position ng Voyager okay so sobrang layo na niya Ito yung orbit ng Pluto. Along the way, meron siyang nakita dwarf planet in 2003, UB313, Aries. So kung mapapas niya, parang ano siya, parang siyang moon, no? Marami siya, meron din siyang mga bombardments, tinamaan siya ng mga asteroids or other, ano, other astronomical uh, fragments during the formation of the solar system or maybe the formation of the, the galaxy, the Milky Way galaxy, or even up to the Big Bang, who knows? Okay, so it, it's very dry. That one is approximately 2,500 kilometers in diameter. So, and this one is Along the way, nakasalubong, di makasalubong, na, na, lumapit siya, nakalapit siya sa Halley's Comet. You know naman Halley's Comet, di ba, yung every 75 or 76 years, pumapasok siya sa, sa solar system, nag-orbit kasi, kasi yan sa solar system, sa sun. So it, it's quite big, na it's a threat to, to our existence. Not only the pandemic, but comet can be a threat, is a threat to our existence. So one comet as as big as this can diminish, you know, make us non-existent anymore. So it happened with a, a comet before, 65 million years ago, nubus niya yung dinosaurs. And that's smaller than this Halley's Comet. Halley's Comet is even bigger. So kailang minomonitor to ng NASA. Okay, so yan si Halley. So yan, yan yung kanyang shape. And uh, we were able to filter out the dust with the height, uh, well, relatively advanced at that time, camera of the, of the Voyager 1. So, may idea na tayo. And this is the Eagle Nebula. Can you see an eagle? Yan. So, parang kaya siya tinawag ng eagle kasi may eagle daw. Okay. And also, it is famous because, yeah, it is called as the the pillars of creation. Why like pillars of creation? Imagine class. Relatively, this is a new nebula. And uh, it's called pillars of creation because these dots are stars. Our sun is a star. And in these nebulas, a lot of dots are baby stars. So imagine, para siyang a formation of a new solar system. Every dot there can be a solar system. So that's how wonderful this nebula is, and, and so as the others. So, oops, ayan siya. So it's pretty amazing. So the, the dust and the gases here can form a star and can form a solar system. Okay, this one is the ring nebula. So it's like a, a planetary nebula. Yung nebula niya, yung clouds of dust and gases are orbiting around around that small star, which is pretty amazing. Diba? Hindi siya naging planets, but just dust and clouds. But uh, depends on the chemicals that are present, that are orbiting around this, uh, this star, uh, it emits a specific colors of light. And uh, by spectroscopy, we can analyze the, the elements that are present from its emission or from its emission of light, which is very specific yung emission na yung frequency, yung color, and yung wavelength ng light. Yung. That's why we know what elements are present in that uh, point in outer space. 
Next, we have the Nebula RCW. I don't know why it's called RCW, but look at the you know, parang pinkish uh, ano, or red maroon, yung kanyang dust. It's, it's so weird. It's like it doesn't make, you know, like there's no orbit, pero it's almost spherical na rin, di ba? So, and then the Rosette Nebula, shapes like a rose. Perhaps, Parashan you know, Rose, beautiful nebula. And Orion Nebula, mm, it's like milky. So if you have diffuse nebula, it, and they say that it's visible to the naked eye in the night sky. So marami ding ano dyan, star formation yung nangyayari sa Orion Nebula. A protostar, so ayan, meron din siya mga gas surrounding that star, pero tingnan nyo class, parang spiral ring yung kanyang nebula or clouds of dust and gases. This is a Milky Way galaxy. Uh, our sun is indicated here. So if nandito yung black hole, yung pinaka center of the Milky Way galaxy where every solar systems are orbiting around it, hindi tayo special. So nandito tayo, wala tayo sa gitna, wala tayo sa gilid. We're somewhere in the middle of, uh, from the center to the edge of our Milky Way galaxy. In Germany, it is called Milchstrasse, Gatas na Street. <laughs> okay, Milchstrasse. Uh, yeah, it's, it's Milky Way galaxy because you know the, the colors of the light is like a milk, you know, milky. So here's our sun. This is a black hole that engulfs a a star or a an object, a massive object. So ang ginagawa ng black hole, pag merong nakapasok sa kanyang event horizon, event horizon is the point in space surrounding the 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 black hole where in you that that light and that that matter cannot escape and it will be attracted towards the center of that black hole and all the matter is converted, all the mass is converted into pure energy, pure emissions of light and this is a gamma burst converted into gamma radiation and it happens a lot we observe a lot of this using gamma detectors and you notice gamma radiation is very damaging to any any astronomy anybody any matter around that that hits that gamma burst so it can happen that you know matugma matugma tapat tayo sa gamma burst na to that we can all be killed by by a gamma burst by a tremendous amount of gamma radiation, which is an ionizing radiation, dangerous to, to, to lives. You know, it can destroy at the level of the DNA of the molecule. So yan yung si black hole, kaya, you know. NGC galaxy, so ayan siya. Parang milky, milky din siya, spiral galaxy din. <clears throat> so, ayan siya, image by Hubble Space Telescope. Ooh, back to the home. This is our, the Earth with clouds. Amazing, right? We're not, you know, we're not visible in, if you're somewhere in outer space, we're just a dot, nothing special. The Earth without the clouds, see? The Earth with the rising moon, and the Earth, a new moon and the earth and full moon. Ooh, ito ba yun, yung kabilugan ng buwan, lalabas yung aswang. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> Nagbabago na, gumutate na, oh, nag-aano na ba? Nag-aano na si, sino ba yun? Wolf at saka yung vampire. Yan yung new moon. Earth and full moon. And this is, of course, our very, our beloved star, the sun. Our sun and its atmosphere. So ayan siya, ganyan siya, alaki with the atmosphere and ito man, without atmosphere. So compare lang yung size. So malaki din naman yung ano niya, yung atmosphere niya, yung corona. So these are the coronal mass ejections. And di rin siya uniform in temperature. Merong cold spots din. But when I say cold spot, ito yung mga dark spots na to of the sun. The temperature is about 1,000 to 20,000 degrees Celsius. So it's not that cold anymore. Your boy, it's higher than boiling temperature. So, mainit pa rin siya. So, ayan yung ating sun. So, it gives us energy. Oh, our neighbor. 
Venus without its clouds. So ang Venus parang puro lang siya volcano. It's a greenhouse ano, uh, planet na, na yung kanyang sobrang init. The, the surface temperature is about 400 degrees Celsius. So talagang napaka-init. Dry. And yung kanyang, liquid, yung kanyang water, puro vapor kasi nag-evaporate na sa outer space. So, kaya may kita natin, puro clouds lang kasi puro vapor. So in the future, pag hindi natin iningatan yung planet Earth, magiging ganyan din tayo pag global warming. So yan yung Venus. Matuto tayo sa neighbor natin si Venus. Well, siya kasi, wala namang humans dyan, but it's, it's, it's the volcanic activity that gives its too much uh, carbon uh, dioxide in the atmosphere. So napakainit ng surface. Ganun din tayo pag maisyado ng mataas yung carbon natin, mainit na yung planet Earth. Well, you know, that's for sure we will end uh, it will end the human race here in the planet mercury they say that the the coolest and the the coolest and the warmest the hottest and the coldest temperature is in mercury because if nasa harap ka ng sun sobrang init if nasa likod yung nasa dark side naman sobrang lamig and it's very dry yung mercury oh mars neighbor mars parang ganun lang uh, kumare sa kapitbahay lang natin to class. So, yan naman si Mars. The re, uh, it's, it's like a red planet because it's iron. Okay? So, parang rusty. It's also dry, but there are liquids. Not liquid, but there are uh, water. On the, it has a polar caps. But solid siya, hindi siya liquid. But my, my theory long time ago na meron siyang liquid water. And these are like rivers or where, where liquids might have uh, run or marami siya mga river system. Yeah, marami siyang ano, uh, impact craters tinamaan siya kasi nasa close to asteroid belt. So madala siyang tamaan. And it might be the reason why yung kanyang liquid water nag-evaporate na wala na, na, na punta sa outer space because of a lot of bombardment from the by, by asteroids. So yan siya. Tumigil din yung kanyang rotation na wala siyang magnetic field to shield it from radiation. So, yan si Mars. Hello, Mars. Okay ka lang dyan. Meron siyang mga ano, mga uh, moon, si Dimos at saka si Phobos. O, oh, ayan. So, magchismisan sila, mga Mars. Meron siyang kachismisan, si Dimos at saka si Phobos. Yan yung kanyang moons. Sa atin, meron tayong isang moon. Okay? Oh, Jupiter, the big brother, brother. It's a big giant, giant planet. So meron siyang forever na storm. Yung storm na yan, mula nung tumingin tayo dyan, mula sa kapanahon ng pani ni Galileo, nandyan na yung red giant forever storm na umiikot sa sa sa, 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 sa planet. So it's just like lots of gases. ba? So nakita ko natin sa personal, <laughs> sa, sa telescope class. Amazing siya. Very ano, parang very ano talaga animated yung 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 mga storm ay yung, yung kanyang red giant talaga wow amazing very bright and jupiter jupiter's uh, moons ayan and their orbits the first eight the closest eight moons of jupiter so ayan si ganymede si io si bato astretia metis hindi ko kabisa si europa so ayan Saan kaya dyan pwede tayong tumira? Oh, the most beautiful planet. Saturn, it has rings. And these are uh, rocks, stones, boulders, dust, particles. Oh, yan yung kanyang bands of... Ano. So nabuo yung ano class, yung kanyang rings. Kasi long time ago may tumamang maybe asteroid as big as a moon. And then, because ito ni mga debris ng, 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 ano, ng bombardment or ng pag-explode ng ano na yun, dust, ng, ng ano na yun, astronomical ba, object na yun, na tumama sa kanya. So marami rin moon si Saturn. And it's very beautiful. I've seen that in personal as well, <laughs> in the telescope. Talagang very bright yung kanyang ano, yung bright, bright yung kanyang rings. Amazing talaga. So ayan yung kanyang moons. Saturn's orbit is the red moon. And, and, and its moon. So, yan, si Helin, si Dion, si Eucaladus, si Prometheus, Epimetheus, Mimas, I don't know, Rhea, o pwede niyo ipangalan yung magiging anak niyo. <laughs> Kung anong favorite moons niyo sa Saturn. Oh, 
Uranus, the seventh planet from the sun, the smelly planet, Uranus. No, <laughs> why, why smelly? Because it has a lot of methane gas. I say, di ba, methane is pabaho. So, yan. Do you like Uranus? I don't like Uranus planet because it's, you cannot live there. Okay, just gas, it's toxic, nakakamatay. Okay, don't mispronounce it. So Uranus and its satellite, joke lang, joke lang yung plaza. Uh, Umbrel, uh, so yan, napakadami titania, marami siyang ano, plan, uh, moons. And this one, my storm din to, Neptune, the eighth and the farthest planet from the sun. So meron din siyang storm. Ayan. So, marami rin siyang methane gas. Marami siyang dark spot. Yan yung kanyang orbit and satellite without Nerid kasi meron siyang malayong malayong moon yung si Nerid. So, ayan si Neptune. So, ayan si Nerid. Parang siyang sobrang layo na niya. Pero nag-orbit pa rin siya sa, because of the gravity of, the, of Neptune. With Nerid and Triton. So, ayan siya. Oh, si Pluto. Ngayon class, mas malinaw na. We know more about Pluto. Si Pluto, the smallest. Tinanggal nga siya as a planet. It's still orbiting the sun. Mm -hmm. So, ayan si, ano, si Pluto. Meron siyang moon, si Charon. Char Charon Coneta. Charon. Charot. <laughs> Hindi. Ah, si Charon, yung kanyang uh, moon. Pero malaki din si Charon. Ayan o, oh, si Char Charon. Malaki siya, kaya naapektuhan niya yung pag-orbit ni Pluto. So parang nagwa-wobble-wobble din si Pluto because of the, the gravitational force of attraction. So parang dalawa silang gulong-gulo sa sarili nila. Kanina ba ako mag-orbit? So, so parang ito si, si Pluto naapektuhan din ng gravity ni, ng ano ni, ni Charon. Lakas ng ano ni Charon. Okay. The Milky Way Galaxy. Ano to class? The pillars of creation. Words are escaping us when you discover these monumental pictures of colors and light. The Eagle Nebula or M16 can be found in the Serpent Constellation, constellation, and it's like an open window at the center of a starry night. At the center, many young stars forming, creating a wonderful spectacle of gaseous emissions. Medyo madrama na siya plus. Showing all of this in this fashion is really fascinating. Deeply moving and dazzling. It's <laughs> very good. Okay. Nagdadrama na yung presentation ko plus. Uh, yeah. Comparison of planets. So, you have the smallest planet. Pluto. Si Mercury. Si Mars. Si Venus. Si Earth. Ay, mas malaki si Earth sa Venus. Sabi nila, men are from Mars, women are from Venus, the planet of beautiful beautiful people, ladies, so mga soldiers daw sa Mars. At saan sila nag-meet? Sa Earth. And they reproduce. Wala. Wala. <laughs> then you have Neptune, Uranus, Saturn, and Jupiter. Ura uh, Saturn without the ring. Oh, tingnan niyo naman si Earth. Kasya tayo sa storm ni Jupiter. Pasalamat kayo kay Jupiter class kasi ina-absorb niya yung mga, mga naliligaw na mga comets, mga naliligaw na mga asteroid kasi malakas yung gravity niya. Kasi kung wala si, si Jupiter, yung mga astronomical ano na yun, mga naliligaw na, as, na asteroid or comets, matataas yung chance na tatama sa planet Earth. So para siyang attractive force para i-filter yung mga palapit na ano na ng mga asteroid or comets. So may mga tumamang ano na diyan comet kay kay ano kay Jupiter. We, and we observe that in our telescope. Ayun siya. So, di ba? Di ba? Parang ano lang tayo, we're just a small planet, nothing special where there's life that makes it special. Oh. What is happening to Pluto? Where are you? No, wala na si Pluto dito, class. Parang one, I don't know, maybe Pluto is one pixel in this image. 
sa earth, tingnan niyo sa earth, nunal ka lang ng sun. Di ba? Parang nunal lang tayo ng sun. Ay, life. I hope this is enlightening you beyond, beyond, beyond our sun. <laughs> Kung gadrama na sana ako. There is a vast universe. Ito yung mga email na sinasend lang sa akin before. Ayan! The Earth is not visible at this scale. Where are you, planet Earth? Jupiter is one pixel at this point. Ah, oh, Jupiter! Wala na si Jupiter. Our sun. So, di ba, our sun is not special after all. Sirius Black. I know. Sirius White. So, Sirius is the brightest star in the night sky. So, malino na malino siya. Pero, class, the brightest object is Venus, yung morning and evening star. Yung first na nag-appear at last na nawawala sa night sky. So, mamayang gabi, pag clear sky, tingnan nyo, ang unang makikita nyo na star, which is not actually a star, but it's Venus. Minsan, nandyan din si ano, uh, International Space Station. Uh, pero hindi, yung, hindi gumagalaw masyado ang Venus. So, so Venus, bright, very bright ang Venus. Aside from, from moon, no? bright ang moon. Pero yung Venus, bright din siya. So kal- pag hindi siya nagbiblink, hindi yun star. Planet yun. Yung mga nagbiblink, stars yun. Kasi because of the dust, madali, ma, 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 ano yung, ma, ma disturb yung light. Kaya parang feeling yun, kumukitikitita. Pero hindi naman talaga nagbiblink yung mga stars. It's just because of the atmosphere that blocks part of the light. But uh, Venus is very bright, kaya hindi, hindi siya nagbiblink. Hindi siya star, planet siya. Si Pulops! Yung may si Pulops, yung pangalan niya. No? Parang pwede niya yung pangalan niya maging anak. No? Chex Pulox. <laughs> Chicken Pulox. Anyway, whatever. Arturos! Mo, Arturos! Ayan. So, red giant siya. Yung, yung star natin, yung sun, pag namamatay siya, habang tumatanda siya, magiging red giant din to. Until it consumes, consumes all its energy, magiging, ma, magi-implode siya. So magiging, ma, marirelease yung mga gases sa outer space. So it's a dying, Arturus is a dying star. So we're just waiting kailan kaya nun ay kukonsume yung sarili niya para maging, ano, uh, maging death, mamatay siya. And pag sobrang laki ng star, pwede maging black hole din yun. Ganun yung ano. Next, Antares. Ayan, laki ng Antares. Sun is one pixel. So ganun ka wide range ng mga stars. No? From very small to very large. So talaga naman, Diyos ko Lord. <laughs> Antares is the 15th most bright, uh, brilliant star in the night sky. It's located at more than, more than, more than 1,000 light years. So, Beetlejuice. Ooh, Beetlejuice. Pag may anak kayong babae, pangalan niya, Beetlejuice from the star. And then, so, Rigel. Meron pa si Rigel Aldebaran. Parang ano lang. Parang na Aldebaran lang ako. And now, how big and tall are you and all those problems that you have today? What are the things that are important to you so that your discolor sc- <laughs> and drama? Anyway, oh, view from space, night lights. Tingnan mo mga may hirap na bansa, madidilim. Pag yung mga cities, they, ano, they light up. Philippines. Oh, New York. Yeah, and saan yung ano, city of light? Paris. Paris somewhere here. And then... The sunrise. Rise, rise. Ayan. Pacific Ocean. Pacific, oh my God. Wonderful blue planet. Can you find a hidden Mickey? Kayo, kung may makita kayo sa business. <laughs> Yung mga hindi nakagets, hanapin nyo si hidden Mickey. Manood na, manood na lang kayang Disney. <laughs> Joke lang. Appreciate your home for one moment. Our children's health and teach easy. Tama na nga. Now, oh, meron pa pala. Now you will see a picture of those moments when you feel life is overwhelming. When you think of your problems are enormous and when you think there is an immense difference between the things you do and those you don't. Ano raw? 
to get lali it's also a picture when you have moments as a human being you think you are powerful and magnificent you are a homo sapiens master of creation at the zenith of your technological power and you feel that whatever so far we are unique in this universe meron pa hindi pa tapos class okay basa na naman Okay, and finally, a picture for those moments when you think the world is so big where you live in this in just, uh, with this great sea, there's all the oceans, mountains, and ranges, and uh, environment. Okay, <laughs> because Earth has 500 million square kilometers of surface, 6,000 quadrillion tons of rocks, and more than 1,000. Dami naman pala eh. Anyway, look at this. Contemplate this picture for a few moments. So it was taken by the Cassini Huygens, German or Dutch, Cassi, Dutch, Dutch to plus, Cassini Huygens, Huygens probe in 2004 when it arrived at the ring of Saturn. So yung probe na to plus, a mission niya to study Saturn and its uh, moons. Pero may nakita siyang nunaan. Some of my students will say, sir, parang kulangot. Okay, tawanan sila. So, sabi ko, class, that kulango is your planet. We are all in this little blue point, all our wars, all our problems, our greatness, and misery. Tagal? All our technology, our art, our advances, our civilizations, all our wildlife, all our races, religion, governments, country, state, our love, our hate, six billion. Oh, no. 7.8 billion, mag-8 billion na tayo class in constant agitation. So we are all in those little blue point, little kulangot of yours. It does make you think, no. <laughs> so I guess if you want, we can take this picture like a lesson in humility and like a double message on one hand, how little we are in this universe with our problems and our differences and we see them on this scale. But on the other side, how fragile is our planet and the importance of taking care of this little, little blue kulangot, little blue point, because it's the only home we have. It's the only planet where we know there is life. So we've seen other planets as well with, with liquid water, but we haven't seen life yet. Think about it. Our world is beautiful. The end, who knows? Maybe not. <laughs> Send this message to you. Okay, class. So um, just a you know, lighter uh, appreciation of astronomy. So, so that's all for this, uh, for this uh, recording. Uh, not that I know actually, not that serious. So I hope I entertained you a bit. Uh, 